the first time since the late 70s, a portion of artist Frida Kahlo's original works are in the Chicago area as part of a new exhibition. Arts correspondent Angel Edo takes us for a visit and gives us a closer look at how Frida Kahlo's life experience influenced her work. While she's known as one of the most influential Mexican painters of our time, a new exhibit honoring the late artist hopes to tell stories not commonly shared of Frida Kahlo. The idea behind this was to give people context to her life, who she was, her influence, and not only about her, but what was going on in that period. The first portion of the exhibit tells just that, a breakdown of who Kala was before she became an artist, leading up to a moment that would arguably define her work forever. A severe bus accident would require her to have more than 30 surgeries and force her to wear corsets for the rest of her life. But it was in her recovery period that she found ingenuity within her developing craft. This is a recreation of the bed that Frida Kahlo painted some of her earliest self-portraits in, all with the help of a mirror. Think about this young 18-year-old girl that's confined, that's vibrant and depressed. They created an easel that she could use while lying in bed. And they put a mirror underneath the canopy so that she could see herself. And so she started painting self-portraits. And she said, I often paint self-portraits because I am so often alone and I am the subject I know best. Now once visitors have gotten to know the woman behind the artist, they're encouraged to use that knowledge to better interpret 26 of Kahlo's original works borrowed from the Dolores Almedo collection. Everyone can recognize the eyebrows, the clothes, the hair pulled up, but those are very superficial kind of exterior representations of who she was. I think the opportunity to see these actual works in person um, is an opportunity to get as close to hearing Frida tell her own story. She speaks very directly and honestly about the challenges in her life. That has an, uh, an honesty and an intensity that's coupled with the intensity of the images themselves, so it's almost like they're supercharged. But the figures in her work are so recognizable, many argue that Kahlo's style was based in surrealism, an idea she rejected. But it's because of the stories within her stories that curator Justin Witte describes her style as symbolic realism, most notably seen in her broken column self-portrait. You have Frida exposed, the center of her chest kind of opened up, and you see in replaced of a spine a, a, a column that's been shattered and cracked and is barely holding on. And then she herself and that column are kind of held together by this medical corset. And then on top of that crumbling, fragile column, you have Kala's head staring out at the viewer. And although she has tears coming out of her face expressed with the pain that she's in, her look is in no way uh, resigned to the pain. And it's unapologetic. She did not run away from these realities in her life. She did not try to diminish herself because of them. And she was an incredibly strong, powerful woman and artist who spoke truthfully through her work, even when that truth was painful. For Chicago Tonight, I'm Angel Ito. And you can check out the exhibit, Frida Kahlo, Timeless, until September 6th at the Cleve Carney Museum of Art, located in the Mackinac Arts Center in Glen Ellen.